Charles Keane took over as manager of the Princess's Theatre, which was on Oxford Street, in 1850. And for the rest of the 1850s, he produced these extraordinarily spectacular productions of Shakespeare's plays, renowned for his attempts to make them historically and archaeologically correct. What we get is really monumental architectural scenery. And there are many records of this, including this drawing, which is a drawing taken from William Thomas Greaves' set design for Macbeth. And here is the illustration from the Illustrated London News of the banquet scene in Macbeth, where Macbeth sees the ghost of Banquo, where Macbeth's murderous traipse through Scottish history is starting to have an absolutely psychological impact on him. What you see from this drawing is by no means a photograph. You know, there's a, there's a kind of visual artistic baggage to these drawings. But what you see is Keane's ambition for this very spectacular and monumental stage architecture. These would have been painted canvas flats stretched over frames of timber and possibly some solid card or some very stiffened canvas. But the attempt here to give us a sense of a 10th century castle. Keane and his wife Ellen dressed in what they had researched as a historical costume of rough-hewn woolen tweeds and kilts. So the whole emphasis in Keane's productions is to match Shakespeare's wonderful writing with equally spectacular scenography and production values, very high production values. You see this also in Keane's other works, so his production of Sardanapalus. Here we have a drawing again from the Illustrated London News of the Hall of Nimrod. The structure and scale of this staging is epic. It's like these extraordinary paintings that John Martin, the artist, was producing only a couple of decades earlier of filling the stage with an extraordinary amount of detail but on this huge, almost superhuman, larger-than-life scale. Keane has entered history, or theatre history, in these revivals of Shakespeare at a time when the Victorians cut Shakespeare to ribbons. Keane restored the historical texts and tried to give them the production values he felt were appropriate for the national poet, which is what people thought of Shakespeare at the time. But arguably, the play and the production that really made history is a purely popular sensational melodrama, written or rather adapted from the French by the Irish, English, American, French playwright Dion Boucicault, the Corsican Brothers was a sensation in 1852, so much so that Queen Victoria returned to see it several times at the Princesses. It spawned all sorts of spin-offs, including these sheet music pieces from the play itself. So if you couldn't get to see the play, you could buy the ghost melody from the Corsican Brothers. And it was typified by this illustration. We have it here as the cover of the sheet music, the melody from the Corsican Brothers and the ghost melody from the Corsican Brothers. It's this image of a double scene. And this was the scene that was the spectacle and the sensation. It involved a piece of stage machinery known as the Corsican trap, which allowed the ghost of one of the brothers at the moment of his death to appear to his twin in a completely different part of the country. That trap, it typifies really the wonderful paradox of the spectacular scenic Victorian stage, that these moments of magic, of transformation were achieved by very Victorian 19th century industrial mechanisms. And we've got one here to show you. It's based on the star trap. So what I've got here is a model of a typical trap 
in the 19th century stage, made by the theatre historian Richard Southern. And you have to imagine that this me mechanism is probably the height of one and a half or two storeys of a domestic house. It's run by cables here and by counterweights either side. So the stage mechanists, really usually very strong, brawny men, would use ropes to work the pulley to allow the performer to rise at speed, although I'm being very careful with this model, up through the stage, through a hole on the theatre stage. And there we have the performer appearing. What I think is extraordinary about this is the level of strength required to operate such a mechanism. This would probably have had, as we can see in this drawing, three to four strong men pulling the pulleys. But what also we have to think about is the bravery, courage and risk that the performer is taking to rise at speed, unsupported, and appear as if by magic on the stage. Now, the Corsican trap worked a little differently. The Corsican trap was extraordinary because it allowed the performer, instead of rising straight up, to appear to glide and move up at the same time in a kind of diagonal gradient. Either way, the possibility of injury, head damage, limb damage was always there. But what we get is the magic of theatre created entirely by industrial mechanisms.